Hey guys, so I'm back with more CDs. So we're gonna continue through with the chariot. So here we have the fiance. So funny thing about this, this is the second copy that I've owned of it. Uh, my original I let a friend borrow and I haven't seen that friend in several years and haven't heard from them and they've deleted their social media or blocked me or whatever. So I'm not really expecting to get that back. So I decided to finally uh, get it again because I did enjoy this album. Uh, so uh, for The Chariot, this is a little bit more of a uh, <clears throat> rocking album. I'd say it's a little bit less in your face than uh, most of their stuff. I think it's pretty good. It's one of my favorite, probably my second favorite from them. Uh, I rather like all the topography on this album too. And really in general, the artwork's cool. That's kind of a steampunk vibe going to it. It's kind of hard to see because of how reflective it is, but it does have, uh, I believe, the track listing on here. More artwork on the inside. And uh, for the booklet, we have some more of that cool topography and steampunk-esque pictures of all the band members. So that's the fiance. Next, this is my personal favorite album from The Chariot. It's Wars and Rumors of Wars. This is probably their, uh, I'd say probably their most aggressive, uh, in your face, very uh, noise and distortion heavy. Uh. So there was a lot of interesting things going on with the artwork for this album. Uh, so, all of the artwork on the uh, actual jacket was hand stamped by members of the band. Their sign and number. So mine was stamped by David, their drummer. It's number 23,449 of 25,000. They ran a contest where if you uh, got CDs signed by all the members and show them. Uh, They'd uh, name a song after you on their next album, Long Live. I have that on vinyl, not CD, so I won't be showing it to you, but here's the book. Obviously, it's more polished since it's not hand-stamped. Thomas is arriving on my camera, so he might knock it out of place a bit. This here is the last album from The Chariot. Uh, it's a pretty solid album. Uh, so we got One Wing, kind of a little bit more experimental. The most experimental album I would say would be Long Live, uh, but that one I kind of felt like got a little bit cheesy. This one's a little bit more uh, easier to take seriously. So I'd say I definitely uh, prefer this to Long Live. I really like the artwork for this album, too. Of course, I've got the booklet. Get the paint. Oh. For some reason, I thought it was one of those book style, not a fold out. But that's okay. Next, uh, we have one of my favorite albums, London Calling from The Clash. We do have another album of theirs on vinyl. This is my only uh, Clash album on CD. And even then, I still kind of feel like I'd like to get some more uh, Clash in my collection. Just a simple disc. Uh, classic photo behind it, though. Kind of a 
poster style insert. I do rather like the uh, way the lyrics are done in here. As far as those, it's kind of weird because like the lyrics go right set up like this way, but then the rest of the art is upside down. So that's kind of a weird thing that they did. <clears throat> I think I'm getting sick right now. And now we're getting into my Coheed and Cambria collection. So I was kind of in debate if I was going to show these because I do have a few of these. Uh, I am going to show them so at least you know that I have them. But uh, I have only the disc, nothing else for uh, Coheed and Cambria. is the second stage, Turban Blade, their first album. Pretty good. Uh, the first time uh, this ever happened to me... Uh, it was on accident. I think this is the only time I've ever done it when it was deliberate. I just couldn't really find what I thought was a decent deal on the full CD, and I really wanted to get it. So I settled on uh, just getting this disc in a paper sleeve. That's uh, one of their most popular albums. I don't, in fact, I say it's definitely not my favorite, but we got in Keep, Keeping Secrets of Silent Earth 3. A lot of uh, fan favorites. Uh, the title tracks pretty solid. It's got a slip case. Here's the jewel case inside of it. Pretty basic CD. Kogan and Cambria attempts to have some sort of pretty uh, great art with their albums though. For those that don't know, Kogan and Cambria is basically a concept band like you've heard of concept albums where they're a concept band all of their albums except one which is ironic actually i'd say not very ironically the only one that i don't own because i just wasn't digging most of what i heard even knowing it's not concept but all of their uh, albums tell a story that takes place in the same universe so that's in keeping secrets of silent earth three Toad and Cambria is kind of known to have really weird, long titles, as I'm sure you'll pick up. This is probably the one that I'd recommend starting off with. Again, not necessarily my personal favorite, but a really good starting point. We have uh, Coheed and Cambria, Good Apollo on Burning Star 4, Volume 1, From Fear Through the Eyes of Madness. Who is that a title? As simple as this cover is, I've always thought it was a really solid uh, cover, just really bold. Slip case again. Got guillotine. Always thought guillotines are cool. I don't know why. There's that guillotine again on the disc. More guillotines. <clears throat> and let's see if I can get this book out. that picture right there. And next up we have a uh, <clears throat> Coheed and Cambria, uh, considered to be, uh, uh, what was it, Good Apollo on Burning Star 4, Volume 2, even though it doesn't have it listed on here, uh, its main title is No World for Tomorrow, I just wants to sit on my lap. This is a really solid album for a while, this was my personal favorite, I don't think it's that popular amongst most fans though but I personally love the fuck out of it uh, there's all the artwork it's, you know simple black plastic since it's a digi pack there's a CD and a DVD I can't remember what was on the DVD it's been a while since I've watched it Let's see did it list it yeah as the making of it I believe a few uh bonus tracks and alternate versions and stuff like that 
here's the book. And yeah, I mean, going by time, uh, it's a good time for me to stop anyway, but I definitely feel like now is a particularly good stopping point just because uh, these albums are considered to be kind of a quadrilogy, all focused on the same character and continuing events and stuff. So I definitely feel like now is a really good time to end it off. Like I said, I do have more code in Cambria because not all of their stories are necessarily continuations of each other, but they all take place in the same universe, and they have uh, comics to go with their albums, too. I know there's been a few attempts to get a movie made set in their universe, but it just never seems to work out. But yeah, like I said, I do have more from them, but I'll get to that in a later video, so I'll see you then.